Good evening and welcome to our CBS Miami Debate Digital Debrief. I'm Elliot Rodriguez. And I'm Rudy Shabazi, and we're joined here with by Jim DeFiti, who has been watching the debate as well, to break it all down for us. So, a lovely debate it was. <laughs> it was testing. I want to get your, your testing, opinion, yes. Jim, because this was their second and final debate. The last time they hadn't even met each other before. What was the difference to you in this debate when you think of this one and the last one? Uh, a couple of things. One, just by pure structure, I, I didn't like really this debate because the moderator was too much of interfering. It was a, this is what I hate about these sort of debates. When you get into this, you have 30 seconds to respond and 15 seconds, and can I have 40 seconds? And they spent more time talking about time than they did actually discussing the issues. So I don't think there was a lot of depth that we got from this. What we got was a lot of fighting. What we got was we saw a very aggressive Ron DeSantis, who clearly, I think you can read by his tone, that he believes that he's slightly down in the poll, that he's behind this race. And so he went on pure offense against Andrew Gillum, trying to stoke fear, trying to stoke the ideas that, that what he's done in Tallahassee has created an environment of crime and that, that crime will spread throughout the state of Florida. Gillum, on the other hand, was again trying to stay focused on a vision for the state. But he was having to play defense because of the stories that have come out in the last 24 hours about the FBI investigation. How do you think he handled the question about the FBI investigation? Because uh, it has come out that he did receive uh, Hamilton tickets from an undercover FBI agent apparently doing an investigation into Tallahassee politics. Yeah, and his mea culpa at this point was simply to say that he should have asked more questions. The, his brother was the one who got the tickets. He thought they were, there was a weird moment where we were hearing that the, the we thought that the brother was going to pay the FBI right. agent back with Jay-Z tickets and Beyonce tickets, and somehow it was all going to even out in the wash. Look, it's we actually a, have that. We actually let's have wait that, that then. Let's, okay. let's listen to sure. it. Uh, one, uh, I did go and see Hamilton. I, I was aware uh, that Adam Corey and uh, Mike Miller arranged uh, so that we could go and see the show. Uh, I arrived at the theater and received my ticket from my brother. Um, the problem uh, that I have is that I should have asked more questions uh, to make sure that everything that had transpired was above board. I was informed by my brother at the time that he gave Adam Corey tickets to a Jay-Z, Beyonce uh, concert, of which I understand they took later, and I understood that to have solved uh, whatever the issue was with regards to the expenses associated with it. But I take responsibility for not having asked more questions. But let me tell you, I'm running for governor. Uh, in the state of Florida, we got a lot of issues. In fact, we got 99 issues, and Hamilton ain't one of them. So a couple of things. First thing I want to say is clearly I'm not getting out of the house more. I'm not going to Jay-Z. I'm not going to Beyonce. I have never had Hamilton tickets. So I, I'm doing something wrong right there. On the second thing, just so the viewers at, at home or watching online can understand, Corey that he referenced is a lobbyist right. with close ties to him. Mike Miller is FBI Mike. We now know he was an undercover FBI agent. Look, clearly they came in knowing that this was going to be raised again as an issue. So they had that, you know, 99 problems, but uh, Hamilton ain't one line in his back pocket. It still isn't a great answer, and, and you sort of wish in hindsight, I'm sure the folks in the Gillum campaign wish that they had cleaned this up a lot earlier than wait, and then having it all sort of explode on them in the final two weeks. How damaging is it? Look, this, these races are always decided on very small margins. Right. The last governor's race was decided by 64,000 votes. That was out of more than 6 million cast. You're going to have 7.5 million votes cast. Every vote matters. And if you've got some undecideds and they can, they can muddy up the water around Gillum a lot, then that could hurt them. We have to point out, too, that early voting has already started. So a lot of people have already voted you right. know, before seeing this debate and before being uh, notified about that text right. message. So what you can envision, though, is that the folks who have already voted early, and you're right, there's like a million and a half votes have already been cast. Those folks made up their mind months ago. They knew that they were either going to vote for the Democrat or for the Republican. Their minds were made up. The folks who are still processing, the folks who haven't voted yet, either gone down in early voting or going to be doing Election Day voting, those are the ones that are still making up their minds, and that's who Ron DeSantis was trying to appeal to. Because, again, I think that the polling tends to show that Andrew Gillum is ahead. I think that that's what DeSantis believes. And so he's trying to claw back and, and really do as much as he can to hurt Gillum in the eyes of those undecided few voters there are. Okay, I got a question here. First, I want to tell you that the uh, that Hamilton is coming to the Broward Center <laughs> December 18th. Jim, yes. you really, I really, you have, to really see have to see it. Okay. Yes. The question I have is DeSantis referred to Gillum as Andrew. 
Gillum referred to DeSantis as Mr. DeSantis. Anything we can read into that? The familiarity, I think, I actually don't think it plays well for DeSantis. I think that when you realize that these two men had only met for the first time at the debate on Sunday, that they don't have a relationship. And, it, and, and what's striking to me is that you've got Ron DeSantis making these just just haymaker blows against Andrew Gillum. And then at the end of the debate tonight and, and the last one, he's all smiles. Hey, great to meet you. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? And hey, you know, so there's a disconnect between how he tries to come across and attack Gillum and then acts all buddy-buddy. It's, it, it, like I said, I, I heard from people that it turned them off to Ron DeSantis in that way. Gillum is just being very circumspect, and I think that that role sort of plays better for him, you know, in this as well. There was one area, though, where DeSantis was kind of playing defense, and that was the issue of race, about comments he's made, about people he's uh, been associated with, and I think we actually have some sound from him, from uh, DeSantis responding to uh, the insinuations that he is aligned with racists. Here's the deal. Let me just say this. Let me just say this straight up. Uh, you know, I've lived my life, whether it's athletics, whether it's military, whether it's serving as a prosecutor. You know, when I was downrange in Iraq, we worked together as a team, regardless of race. We had the American flag on our arm. We wore the same uniform, and we fought for the country. When I was a prosecutor, I stood up for victims of every race, color, and creed. That's the only way to do it in our country. It's something I believe in, and as governor, I will represent represent all the people, everyone will get a fair shake. But I am not going to bow down to the altar of political correctness. I'm going to not let the media smear me like they like to do with so many other people. Sir, I'm, I'm certainly not going to take right anything there. from Andrew Gillum, who's endorsed the Dream Defenders, which says Israel is an apartheid state and, and which says the police that, and prisons have no place right in there. justice. Mr. Gillum. You know, what's interesting is the response immediately by Andrew Gillum after that was a hit dog will holler. Because just before that clip started, what you, what you missed was that, that, again, Ron DeSantis was being questioned about his appearance at various conferences run by David Horowitz. David Horowitz has said some terrible, uh, horrific, racist things in the past. The, the, the moderator pointed those things out, and then DeSantis exploded with, how the hell am I supposed to know who's, you know, who's speaking at these events or what he said? And, and that's when Gillum comes back later, says a hit dog will holler. I, it sort of reminded me, again, I'm old, so we go back to 1994, Florida politics. You know, when Jeb Bush debated Lawton Childs, that, that was a pivotal moment in that debate where Lawton Childs said something that was very Floridian, and I just always want to make sure I get it right. The old he coon, he walks just before the light of day. And Jeb, and Jeb just, Bush was like Jeb a deer was in headlights. like deer in the headlights, <laughs> did not understand it, and it was that sort of moment that galvanized the idea that, that you know, Lawton Childs was old Florida. He was, it was that. Jeb Bush was a newcomer. I'm not sure if the, uh, you know, a hit dog will holler line will play the same way, but it was reminiscent to me of that. Jim, I want to ask you, early on, they, um, they talked about these uh, uh, explosives that have been mm -hmm. mailed to different uh, Democratic uh, uh, figures, you know, former President uh, Obama, Hillary Clinton. Uh, what did you think of the reaction from both men? What you would expect? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you don't, neither one of them wanted to get too far ahead of it. Again, it's, if you look at it, the, the rhetoric has been a lot harsher in a lot of ways on the DeSantis Republican side here in Florida. That, that you know, again, trying that idea of stoking fear, uh, that's been a large part of the DeSantis campaign at this point, including an answer to one question that talked about, you know, whether or not, you know, whether or not Andrew Gillum would abide by ICE detainers. Right. And and whether or not that, that he would release people from jail. Do we have that I clip? Think, I, I Let's believe play we that. have that. Let's get yeah. that. Well, look, I mean, I have to see what my options are, but, but here's what I would say. Andrew says there's no sanctuary cities in Florida, and, and that may be true, but that's going to change if he's governor. I mean, he will support sanctuary cities. He said he will not cooperate with Donald Trump's ICE, uh, and that to me is just absolutely outrageous. I mean, he hates Trump so much, he's political posturing, that if we have a criminal illegal that serves a prisoner sentence and there's an ICE detainer on that individual so that we can get them in federal custody and send them home, 
Andrew doesn't want to, he won't commit to cooperating. I will cooperate, I will get that, that criminal out of, our, out of our state and out of our country. And here's the thing, why would you allow your dislike for the president to knowingly put communities at risk? To have mothers who may have their sons or daughters harmed by somebody. That is just wrong. We have to protect Floridians Mr. DeSantis, first. Thank you and that's much. what I'll do as to governor. Be, to be clear, that was a question to you, so I gave you more time, not the 30 seconds. However, Mr. Gillum, 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Yeah, sure. So again, I said this before, Mr. DeSantis has far too many degrees not to get it. Uh, but yet again tonight, he shows that he doesn't get it. Uh, un under no circumstance would I let someone who has committed a crime in our community, in our state, get away with the committal of a crime. They will be adjudicated through the normal judicial process and held fully responsible. But what we also said is we're not going to criminalize people off their personhood simply because you're a brown-skinned person or you speak a language that may be of a foreign tongue to Mr. DeSantis or you may live in a neighborhood that might include more brown people. That doesn't in it of itself uh, subject you to racial profiling. All right, sir, That's the you, essential Mr. instance Gillum, of what you. he would be promoting. So a couple of things I just want to be clear about there. He also, Ron DeSantis, had another point, sort of uh, was pretty blatant in talking about how some of these illegals will get out of jail and, right. and rape people, you know, and so that putting the community at risk. That was the larger point he said. I want to just so that you understand the issue, the differences between the two of them. Ron DeSantis is saying that if ICE comes in and says, we'd like to hold person X at the top before they're released, just put a detainer on them, that, that the that the local jail should do that. Andrew Gillum's position is slightly different. What he says and what a lot of people do say is that if you want to hold somebody, get a judge to sign an order. That, that there's a difference between whether or not you have somebody at, a, at the ICE level right. make a decision as to whether or not a person should be detained or whether or not the ICE should go to a court, get a judge to say, we want this person held, and then get a court order. Andrew Gillum says he'll re respect any court order that comes in. Ron DeSantis says that's not good enough. He wants it so that any ICE official can simply say, detain this person, and they will. And so is it going to be effective for Ron DeSantis to use this kind of fear of, of illegal immigration and the danger that these people can pose in our state? He also brought up crime a lot, the crime in Tallahassee. That's been one of his other uh, main points that he's been trying to drive home. Is it, a, is it an effective strategy for well, him? Well, uh, you could ask the President Donald Trump, who started a campaign based on fear. So that, I think there's a lot of that overlap here that you're now seeing. You know, now look, a Andrew Gillum has a lot of explaining to do with a number of his policies. I wish that, the, that a lot of this debate would have been more focused on trying to drill down on issues like health care. How do you pay for Medicare for all? We didn't really get a good answer on that. What, go well, ahead. He did talk about raising the corporate tax rate, right. but that was more focused on, on education. education. Right. And that's so, something that uh, Andrew Gillum is saying he's, a, he's for, and DeSantis says would be terrible, would be horrible for Florida's economy. And also says it will result in, a, in an income tax, which is... Well, well that's another... Well, that's, let's be clear about one thing. Uh, it, there is no way that, that there will be a state income tax. That's the bedrock of the state of Florida, is that there is no personal income tax in the state. That is not going to change. The question of the corporate tax rate and whether you raise it, the question that really needed to be asked of Andrew Gillum and pressed on, but again, this format was awful. I cannot begin to stress how much I hated this debate format, was there is not a great chance that Andrew Gillum is going to get his tax increase through a Republican legislature. Good point. So if that's the case, then how will he create the, the income necessary to ha pay teachers what they want? Because it's not going to be a state income tax. And if the legislature won't go with you on a corporate tax, then how do you pay for these things? How is he that's get, the question that he, should have been asked. How is he going to get stricter gun laws in Florida with the Republican legislature? Same thing. But now I think on, this, on the gun laws, I think what you're going to see is, and not, not that I don't want to start talking about 2020 when we're still in 2018, but you are already seeing groups that are lining up that will be doing constitutional amendments on the issue of guns. That's going to be a major fight in 2020 that you'll see on the ballot then. But let's just get through 2018 first. <laughs> and it's also something that's been driven home here in Florida because of Pulse and because of Stoneman Douglas that a uh, lot absolutely. of people who were hardline on before are now softening their positions a little bit. Absolutely, yes. I think we've pretty much covered it. Well, you know, look, this for both these guys, this is really going to be about turnout. Who turns out to vote? You know, Ron DeSantis is trying, and, and Andrew Gillum, this is a base election. They're trying to gin up their base right. as much as possible. And, and both sides are trying to bring new voters into the system. 
The reality is that for Andrew Gillum to win, he needs to do what he did in the primary, which is not get likely voters, but to get unexpected voters to come in, which is increasing the number of African Americans who normally don't vote in midterm elections, getting young people to vote. That's the key for him. For Ron DeSantis, it's getting that old Trump base up, fired up and invested and really going after do something. Do you think we will see Donald Trump in Florida campaign? We will. will. Uh, October 31st, oh. Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. He it's will be, be the real Donald Trump. It will be. It will be in Southwest Florida. Ron DeSantis has already committed to being there. He didn't sound exactly thrilled when Elaine Kihana from CBSN interviewed him the other day about it. But yes, Ron DeSantis will be there. My question is, will Rick Scott be there, mm. who's also in a very tight race for the Senate? And by the way, let's point out. Give credit to Ron DeSantis. Give credit to Andrew Gillum. They had two English language debates and a Spanish language debate. No, actually, they didn't have a Spanish language debate. Rick Scott and Bill Nelson will have no English language debates. But that's, that's because of the hurricane in part, right? There was time to have one, and it was really more on Bill Nelson backing away from it at the end of the day. All right, uh, Jim DeFitti, thank you very much for yep. uh, your insight into this debate. Of course, we'll have coverage on this on CBS 4 News tonight at 11. And for complete coverage on all the races in campaign 2018, check out our comprehensive election guide, which of course you can find on CBSMiami.com. Yeah, thanks for joining us.